You know what I hate about being an athlete? You know, I go through so many water bottles because one, I hate washing the cup of my dish to drink water. So instead of that, I buy water bottles and I go through seven of these. So anyways, let's go back to the video. <laughs> What's up everyone, um, it's Eric again here with a, I guess kind of update video on, on editing. So um, I got requested by a lot of people, especially um, one of my friends from Detroit actually, who asked me how do I edit. So I'm gonna show you guys how do I edit in that process. So right now I'm gonna boot up Lightroom. So I'm gonna re-edit one of my favorite pictures I took at Angels Crest Highway. So I'm gonna try to unedit this footage as much. So if I like go awkward at points, I'm sorry. So let's get back right to it. So as you can see, I have this one that's edited right here on the right side, but we're gonna slap open this one. So go ahead and go into your Lightroom and go to your develop setting. So um, obviously this was shot on the T6 Rebel. I'm recording on the EOS R. So, oh, I hate this camera so much because it's not meant for video, but it gets the job done in pictures. In pictures, it does get the job done. The only thing that sucks about it is an ISO. So, oh, I hate you, but hey, a good photographer is the person who is working behind it. It doesn't have to be the camera. So understand whatever you buy, make the best out of it. That's what Alex stayed in. I'll put him up in the video again. Always tells me to focus on. So that being said, let's start off with the editing. So. This picture right here, okay, this is the first thing I always do when I'm editing. When I'm editing, I always wanna go to my tone curve. So this is the tone curve right here on Lightroom. And so basically tone curves, like a lot of people sleep on this because they don't really mess with this. And what I mean by mess with this is it does shadows, midpoints, highlights, your whites and the blacks. So in this area right here is your shadows, right here your midpoint, which is kind of like your contrast. This point right here highlights and this point at the white. So um, there's more in depth than that, but I could put links down below. So starting off, I'm gonna go on this point on the way to the left and I bring it up slightly a little bit because if you see how it, like pictures kind of turning a little bit fadey-ish, I kind of like making my pictures look cinematic. So I only bump it up a little bit. And so from there, I just progress from there on. So here are my shadows. I kind of want to, you know, like boost them up just a tiny bit because I could do that in post. And my contrast, I slightly want to bring it up because I kind of like making my pictures look super cinematic. So now that I brought that contrast up, I look back at my shadows and I'm like, okay, I want to kind of mess with the shadows more. So at the end of the day, it's like pinpointing what you think is the best. Now, that being said, I'm not saying this is the right way to edit. You know, you have the freedom to edit however you like. This is just how I edit. So please don't think the way I'm editing is good, okay? so. You know, it takes time to adjust these tone curves because at the end of the day, like you want something that you could work with. So once you found that one that like you think it's okay enough, it's, you're set to go. And so just showing you like before and after how much of a difference that makes, just doing a tone curve. So a lot of people also forget to do the red, greens, and the blues. So these target specific colors. So say for instance, I'm targeting the red color. If you do this, move this by a lot, see how crazy that picture goes? So I'm gonna go Control Z or Command Z if you're on a Mac, look back at my tone curve, original one, and go back to the red and go up slightly. Just try to adjust all of them, how they were to the original tone curve so I could get back to what it originally was. This just adds much more color, much more in depth, contrast as the other things I said. So same thing as the green one. I'm gonna adjust it to how it was on the other ones. The green one, realistically, you don't have to do much on it because there's so much green involved here. So right now it's just about fixing everything. So it'll get fixed right now because as you can see right now, there's a lot of greens, but once I adjust the blue, it should go back to normal. So. Let me just adjust that real quick. Okay, so since I see that there's a lot of blue, I don't really need to use a lot of blue right here. So realistically, I just bring it down a bit. So right there, I adjusted my blue. So I kind of want to adjust my green just a little bit 
because that looks just about right. So now that I got that under control, let's adjust our temperature settings. Usually, you know, I like to make my pictures kind of in between, not too warm, not too cold. So right here, this is where I bring in the little detail stuff that I mentioned. So once we already did our tone curves, which we fixed, however, we, we got them to adjust. That's when I start targeting the stuff right here. So right here, I'm gonna bump up my shadows a little bit, lower my highlights so we can kind of see the skies. Kind of lower the whites as well too, because you have all, all, as, as much exposure in my opinion. And in this case, since this is a nature shot, I usually try to bump up the clarity and the texture. More of the texture than the clarity, because clarity was just sharpening it like crazy. So we're just gonna bump the clarity. But if you want, you could also lower it down. And kind of haziness, just like, say if there's fog on the picture and you kind of want to take that off, I'd say lower the dehaziness or in, no, you increase the dehaziness to have a little bit of fog, but in order to, to add some fog, just decrease the haziness. But in this part, this case, I wanna lower the dehaze because I kinda want it to like pop more in the center. So now we got cool vibrant colors going on. So look, we're showing before and after. Now, kinda looks a little bit to like the original picture I had right here, but not as much. Don't worry about that, okay? It's the composition of the photo. Also, you wanna adjust your photo, how it looks. I usually go on auto. If it looks good, in my opinion, it looks good, sweet. And also I try to bump the contrast if I want to a little bit, but you don't have to do as much because we already have that from the other one. Okay, now here's where the game changes, you know, saturation, targeting those colors. Now, I really love making my pictures look super blue in the sky. So a lot of people will confuse the blue skies with aqua. Target blue, that's where usually your skies come in place. So as you can see how like, you can see a little bit of turquoise coming out right there. Start messing with it, you could lower it if you want. Also bring up the illumination, lower it. I wanna increase it a bit just for where I think it's fine. Now, I kinda wanna get my greens a little bit lower, but in this case, you think it might be green, but realistically, it's yellow right here. So if you go to the green, check the hues. It only gets some of the greens, but not all of them, but yellow is, Think of this for instance, if when you're targeting a yellowish, a greenish yellow, it's more likely to be the yellow color. So just target that. And right here, I kinda wanna lower my green so it could kinda look like forest vibes. So now that I have that, I don't really have much to do right here, but just check on the reds, oranges, if you want oranges, so that's not much. I mean, that only target trees, but I guess I'll lower it so I could bring out the wood a little bit, but, um, I lowered the hue for the oranges just so I could pop out more of this um, wood branch on the saturation. So I lowered the saturation so it won't come out as much. Now, one thing that people sleep on a lot is graduated filters. So basically think of like, check this out, how it's basically an area of a section that covers everything. So I got this little square thing and put the dot right there. Sorry if I don't use the right terminology. Grab that and basically it just gets that section. But if you want to invert it, that's, you don't, you just pretty much switch it to the other side. But in this case, I want to invert it this way. So um, what, what I like to do right here, I like to bring the shadows on the floor a little bit, but you don't want to do it too much where like it doesn't look natural. So I noticed that, you know, shadows really aren't working. Okay, so I'm gonna try the highlights. Cool, because I kind of want that water reflection coming up. So this is where I target the texture so it could look much more vibrant. Clarity, not as much, because like I said, it's gonna sharpen the photo, so I'm not gonna do as much on that. And if I want haziness, yeah, go ahead, but no, really, it's about messing around with it. Let's see if we had some blacks, probably just leave it as it is, just bump the exposure just a little bit, contrast, not as much, cool. Um, From the top portion, I don't want it to be as bright, maybe? Who knows, it's about, like I said, it's about messing around, but I kinda wanted to go with the sky, so, I don't think I'm gonna do much, so I'm gonna just Command Z. Nope, we don't want it to look like that. So I'll probably just delete that point. If anything, I just wanna do a slight little brush on the trees. So I'm gonna just lower, not lower, but kind of bring up the exposure on the trees a little bit, just to mess around, see what I could make of it. So you see right there how it kind of looks off if I use the brush. So right here, just fix what you want. So in this case, I'm gonna just I guess might as well just brush as much as I can on this side to where it looks natural, good, clean. 
So same thing again, use the brush, kind of brush on the tree a little bit. And so bring up the exposure a bit. Cool. Now I feel like the center is kind of too exposed. So I'm gonna just lower just a bit. Okay, I feel like it's kind of good right here. So one thing that a lot of people tend to sleep on is one, the calibration. So when it comes to the calibration in Lightroom, think of your camera calibration, okay? Where it's targeting orange colors, blue colors. This is like basically correcting the colors, but you could also mess with it where like you could oversaturate. So a lot of people tend to use these to make that orange and teal look. So I'm gonna try to see if I could mess with it. So you could see like if you do too much of it, it will throw off how the picture looks, which is funny. But see how like I kind of got an orange and teal look? That's what it's mainly used for. Now use it as your discretion, if that's even the right term. Just use it to where you think it looks good and see how like it pops up more of the blue and the greens that I just did right now. But if I put it back to where it originally was, it doesn't do much. So probably the greens on the primaries right here, this is where like it really comes in effect too if you wanna use it, but I, I don't have to do much. If I really wanted to do it, I, I, like I said, you just gotta mess with it, to be honest, and that's how you like really find, hey, what's gonna work, what's not. So this is where I'm gonna attempt to at least fix this if I'm using the calibration settings. So I'm gonna be a little bit quiet here, give me a second. So, I don't think there's much to do, but that's more if you wanna be more in depth with that. But um, now, uh, say for little minor details, go on this um, split toning where you target the highlights. So if you see all that background, the whitish, this is just targeting the highlights of the background. So say if I wanted to make it kind of warmer, I just go on the yellow section, bring it just down. You don't really have to do much because this is what it does. But in this case, I would just use like 8% because if I use no, it just gives it like no no warmth. And I, so I'm just gonna use 8%. And in this case, for the shadows, oh, well, I probably might bring it down to five because I don't want too much orange. In the shadows right here, um, I don't know realistically what would I use, not green or not red because like I said, it's just, I already feel like I did my job right here. Probably blue but it would be really low, but you also have these options right here where you could literally mess with it, but I wouldn't use anything in my opinion. But this is how I edit usually, so I hope you learned something new. Don't sleep on the, let's see, graduated filters and the radio filters and the brushes. Those come in place, but also your turn curves, your, your, sorry, your turn, your turn, to, your tone curves, <laughs> sheesh. Um, that's where it matters the most. Also, um, I edit a lot of these photos and use a preset that I usually made. So I have a, tons of presets that I use. Some of them I bought from Peter McKinnon because he's the guy I learned the most, but don't you don't rely on presets all the time to get you the photo. It just makes your editing faster, but if you wanna like do specificness in editing, um, that's what makes, it much more faster. That's how I'm able to like do same day service, but these are before and after, and we'll put them in between. See how like I kind of made it look much more cinematic. So that's how I edit. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I'm gonna try to do it much as unedited as I can. It's also 11.23 PM because I said, hey, might as well do a video. So please thank me, adios.